This is episode 5 of Dial M for Medic. I would like to introduce today's topic straight away, that being staying healthy in the streets. Keep in mind before we begin that healthcare is different across many different stratas, including age, culture, sex and gender, etc. Therefore, this video will comprise general advice to those who are going to be protesting. Street medics can absolutely help you maintain your health in the streets, but they can only be so many places at once. Ergo, taking care of yourself is paramount, both privately and publicly. Keep yourself safe, and if possible, send these tips to others you'll be demonstrating with or running with as a medic so they can also take proper precautions. Without further ado, let's start. Some things are just out of our control, but we can plan for the inevitable nonetheless. The weather will be a critical factor in determining your approach to street medicing. Dress for the occasion. Make sure you know where you can find shelter in case there is severe inclement weather. If there's a safe place, probably a public one like a library for example, for you to take shelter in, know that place and go there if the weather gets too gnarly. Know your housing options in general. This is important. If police start to harass a group or an individual, sometimes it's simply easier to bail and get to a safe place. If a friend is available to house you and the police aren't actually following you, because if that happens, that's a completely different story, and said friend can then shelter you until things calm down, let them know you might stop by and stay the night. Like I said in the previous episode, this person or persons should be able to support you should arrest or injury happen. Ideally, they should have your contact information, know where you're going to be, have a mode of transportation to a hospital or police station, be able to take care of a child short term, know your medications and allergies and have access to your medical history, and have access to some kind of attorney. Next, you'll want to do some reconnaissance. If the area is heavily monitored, then you need to understand the repercussions of street medicing there or protesting. Try not to park nearby if you can and take public transportation. Know the ways in and the ways out of the area. Get enough sleep, seriously. Do not drink the night before. If you wake up in bad shape, you're going to be compromised for the rest of the day, if not energetically, then mentally. Eat a good breakfast with the protein so the food lasts you till lunchtime or later without a significant crash period. Bring water and make sure it is clean water. For diabetics, test your blood glucose before leaving and adjust accordingly throughout the day. Honestly, this is up to the person, but if you're feeling low and you can't inject or eat safely because of the commotion, just head home for the day or seek a public place away from the chaos. Don't try to stick yourself in a busy crowd. Please don't drink coffee, energy drinks, or anything like that, because dehydration is one of the most common ailments medics see during an event. Caffeine can give some people heart palpitations and cause them to need the bathroom, both of which are not ideal in a protest. Bathrooms are already scarce as it is, and dizziness usually precipitates or accompanies heart palpitations, which can lead to a fall. In addition to your water bottles, please bring salt and sugar for electrolyte-based rehydration. Wear water-repellent clothing. If you don't, say, have an umbrella, then that's fine. A hat and coat with some rain boots will do just fine. If it's snowing and there's ice, especially black ice that you can't see, make sure the boots you are wearing have good traction and treads. Otherwise, you'll risk a bad slip and fall. Please do not wear fleece though. Fleece will absorb chemicals very easily. Open-toed shoes are also a no-no in any weather. Bring an extra pair of socks if your first pair get wet or if they get contaminated. In addition to your liquids, some food to bring along are dried fruits, granola, trail mix, 
protein bars, and nuts. On the medication side, bring your meds in their original bottle. This is very important. It needs to have your information on the label. If needed, carry a doctor's note with you. If you are a prescriber, then you can access some higher level medications that others cannot, like albuterol for respiratory distress. If you use an assistive device, then keep vigilant, please. Some people may try and steal the items and use them to hurt you if things get violent. Police may also use this to their advantage to incapacitate you, especially if they take your device and want to use this as leverage when interrogating you. On the topic of pictures and digital health, please do not photograph anybody else. If you absolutely must, then you need to remove the metadata somehow. I will leave something in the description to help with that. Blurring faces or blacking them out is a must as well. When you meet up with other medics, know the plan. Who's going to be there? Where's the safe meetup point? What's the method of contact? Know where the medic tent is and what's currently stocked. Who's going to be nearby in case you need help? Someone may also want to be on cop watch, checking out the cops in relation to the protesters or medics milling around. This is a standalone point, but for the sake of your kidneys and the amount of toxins and water you're flushing out, please go to the bathroom. In the US, literally almost all restaurants won't bat an eye if you walk in, use the bathroom, and leave. There can be porta potties set up around the area, though those can be kinda gross in all honesty. <laughs> it just depends. If worse comes to worse, just urinate in the woods away from people or something. If you are asthmatic, carry your inhaler no matter what. If you suffer an attack, I would either have a buddy call 911 if you can, call 911 yourself, or get someone near you to call 911. Severe asthma attacks can turn deadly. If you happen to become contaminated and medics have set up a decontamination station, go over there and let them handle it. They'll have eye flushes, possibly bronchodilators, mineral oil to wipe off any pepper spray residue, and tissues to clear your sinuses. This next section contains a trigger warning for sexual assault and violence mention. In the event you have been sexually assaulted and violated, please get checked out at a hospital. There are certified abuse examiners that specialize in sexual abuse. You may also, depending on if there was penetration involved, get a rape kit and an internal exam done. You should take extensive pictures to document the abuse. If law enforcement has abused you, this is absolutely grounds for legal action if you wish to pursue it, though of course, this also comes with its own risks. Trigger warning ends. When in doubt, please call out for a medic. Look for the red crosses on their person, the universal sign of a medic. If you do not speak English as your first language, Many street medics can speak another language and assist you. As a first-time medic, please stay closer to other medics in the medic tent slash wellness center in case you need to call for backup or if you go down. As you gain experience, then you can branch out farther. Please call 911 or redirect someone to an urgent care clinic if things get too dicey. Most urgent cares are low cost with or without insurance and they can transfer to a trauma center if need be. Thank you all for watching this episode. Please keep yourself safe on the streets and don't be afraid to rely on your fellow street medic friends and your colleagues too. The best thing we can do to help ourselves be heard is making sure our bodies and minds are staying in top shape. Have a good day and talk to you soon. Bye.